Oh, hello everybody, hello. Today we're going to be taking a little bit of a peek at this new game about World War I, which is probably the most important event in world history that nobody ever bothers talking about. <laughs> I'm not wrong about that, right? Maybe if you're like, uh, you know, European or French or something. I don't know why I said those as if they're two different groups of people. But, uh... Basically, at least in the United States, everybody just talks about the sequel like it's the best thing ever. But you know what? I think A New Hope was good. The Empire Strikes Back may have been better, but that doesn't mean that the first one was not great itself. Maggie Mags, thank you for the sub. I really appreciate it. So we are going to check things out. Also, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spit some hot takes right here. World War I tanks are freaking sick in the way that they look. And I think that we need more World War One games just because land ships are awesome. <laughs> you know, like the the tanks in World War Two all kind of eventually just became the same thing. Where it was, you know, rotating turret on the top, treads on the bottom. What is this? It's so stupid and I love it. It's fantastic. What a design. It wouldn't exist in real life. Obviously, this is sci-fi. <laughs> ten out of ten. Let's do this. Uh, we're going to check out the campaign, because uh, that's where you start. It's on the top. I want you for the U.S. Army, nearest recruiting station. Oh, that's cool. It, like, uh, slowly, it very slowly becomes the things. Uh, let's, let's do the tutorial, see exactly what this game has to offer. By the way, guys, I did my best to get the audio balance right, but I'm going to ask for feedback as we go through the tutorial if it needs to be louder or quieter. It's always an adventure with every game. Whoa. Is this a really long tutorial? There's a lot. Huh. Is there a lot of stuff? All right, let's see. Chapter one, the Americans arrive. America remained neutral through most of World War I, supplying aid but not taking part in combat. However, Germany's increased attacks on American ships began to sway many in the government. When the British revealed that the Zimmerman telegraphs to the Americans, in which Germany offered to return Americans' territory to Mexico if they would become allies and attack the U.S., it was the last straw. Alright, I'm already, like, a little bit... Like, why has it got to be American-focused, okay? World War I was, like so not our war i'm gonna be completely honest here and i don't think that they have to frame the narrative from an american point of view okay like why don't they do it from the french point of view the french were the heroes they were the absolute legends in this war and they deserve to have something celebrating how much they absolutely held out like bosses didn't I pick the American campaign? I picked the tutorial. Uh, this is where this is my option so far. I don't know, man. I lied about my age and joined up when I was 17. Looking back, I was just a foolish boy looking for glory on the battlefield. The enemy had sunk our ships and trying to turn Mexico against us, and they had to pay. My platoon arrived in France in April of 1918. General Pershing organized our troops. My unit was assigned to a French contingent for training. And none of us had any experience with the new way of fighting. And the trench lines were a bit of a shock. Oh, well, I guess we're here now. <laughs> I'm gonna say that they probably could have used like a fade out there or something instead of just teleporting me directly here. All right, a lot of stuff is going on. Oh, he's French! Look at him! I'm so proud of him. That's amazing. <laughs> Bonjour. I am Lieutenant Colonel André Laurent. Uh, welcome to France. I understand you are eager to fight, but this is the Western Front. The trenches are no place to, for the inexperienced. I never took French, so don't be mad at me there. I'm just excited to see French people. Advisor Overview. The top advisor box contains general information or story content, while the lower box contains how-to information. Click the checkbox to advance. All right. I didn't know it at the time, but Laurent had been in battle in the Battle of Psalm. Uh, you could see a kind of distance in his eyes. 
though he didn't let it show in his voice. Advisor, reviewing the past. Oh, we can review the past. Oh, it just means we can click back on the boxes, I see. Uh, yes, we can. I thought we were going to be able to teleport to the Battle of the Somme. Uh, you'll see a camera symbol on the lower right. Okay. You can uh, click the left and right arrow buttons to review previous dialogue. Be advised, the tutorial will sometimes lock the camera. When it does, you'll see it. Above. Okay. Wow. Incredible. This is the theater map, which depicts the Western Front, including the regions of France, Belgium, Luxembourg, and Germany. Each region shows the current controlling factions. Map is divided into hexagons. All right, they're the best guns. All regions in the map begin under control, either allied nations or the central powers. Allied nations, hexes are blue, central powers are red. Got it, got it. I'll be blunt. The Russian treaty with Germany has freed up nearly 50 divisions of German infantry to be transferred to the Western Front. Your men are needed to shore up the line and push back against this new threat. Front line is where the combat happens. All right. <laughs> Regions indicate attacks, adjacent hexagons, yep, yep, yep. Our civilians see this German spring offensive as something to worry about. Alright, so we got, we got national score. National will is a measure of an alliance's willingness to continue the war. Reduced to zero, we lose the war. Alright, so that's a pretty important counter. <laughs> uh... A worrying civilian does not support the war and begins doubting that we can win, even talking about surrender. National will, win the game, blah, blah, blah. I kind of like that, so you don't have to conquer the world, you just have to make the civilians be like, hey, this isn't worth it, chief. It's, uh, uh from what I understand, the game is sort of like Empire at War, where it has a uh, big 4X map that you do a lot of stuff in, and then the actual battles are real-time strategy battles. This is uh, Petroglyph's M.O. While this army can't worry about the feelings of the civilians, the threat of a new German manpower is not something to dismiss. I mean, we have to worry about the civilians, dude. We're not vigilant. Germany could reach Paris. Cool, cool, cool. But Paris is still a long way from the front lines, and we'll never let Germany get close. You can move with WAST. Okay, cool. I don't have to use the arrows. Oh, it's a very slow WAST. Uh, let me pop open the op. Options, one sec. Options? Control, maybe general. There we go. That feels a little bit better. Uh, okay, hello Paris. How are you doing? Germany can try to reach Paris, but we'll never let them through. We will make sure that your American forces are trained to aid us in this defense. Each region has a defense rating measured in stars. When you attack a region, achieving a great victory removes one star. Once the final star is removed, the region becomes yours. Your star regenerates per turn for the owning faction as long as no combat occurs. So you gotta be super, like, constantly pushing into them. Got it. Paris is also our central hub for new recruits and the manufacturing of munitions, including tanks and aircraft. This is a lot of tutorial that is just text. <laughs> I'm going to be honest here. It feels like they could use a little bit of voice, like just hire a guy. Regions, bonuses. Some regions have inherent bonuses or features. Paris, for example, has both the command HQ bonus, which designates it as a win condition, and the deployment bonus, which means all new French troops begin in this region. Okay. Hope you're taking notes. You'll never see these tips again. It's all pretty simple so far. Uh, repeatedly attack places based on the number of stars. Uh, units start here. Try to control territory. If you take long on the territory, then it uh, will regenerate. And what else was there so far? You can use WASD to move the ca camera, except for right now because it's locked. I think I got it. Our forces begin in Paris to be deployed to the front line. Once you get uh, you, once we get you organized, your men will be deployed in the same fashion. Units and companies, military can be moved on the map. Uh, units have different names but act in the same way. Infantry corps and tank battalion are both allied. You er are both units. Each contains a section of smaller groups called a company. 
Hopefully they are heroes, but not three. The type of companies found in a unit are not always the same. For example, an infantry corps can contain multiple infantry and artillery. Oh, there's more. It seems like this will be a trial by fire. Thank goodness, please fire at me. I had hoped to have more time for drills, but orders are orders. Prepare yourself. Objective events are optional requests that grant a reward. That's me. If completed within a time limit in turns. Objective L events are just one type of event that can occur during a campaign. All right. Intel is expecting a German assault. Oh, no. <laughs> Not our microchips. French command requests that the newly arrived Americans be moved up to reinforce French locations at Chateau. I don't know how to pronounce that. <laughs> Man, where's AMD? They gotta help. Move two American Infantry Corps. Move two French Tank Battalions. I got 750 gold. We're using gold? Alright. I guess we're still on the gold standard at this point, so it's not unreasonable. Three infantry... I got it. View objective. So we gotta move a bunch... Oh, look at him! When you mouse over him, he becomes Giant Grant Games. That's awesome. My man he is throbbing. Uh, our forces here have been fighting briefly, but they have had little rest or peace for a long time. I'm sure your reinforcements are a welcome sight to them all. Massing star, or missing stars. Uh, you must achieve a victory of great victory in level combat to remove a star from a region. When a region is lost, any defenders will retreat to the nearest friendly region. Some of the units, such as siege artillery, cannot be moved in retreat are lost. Oh my gosh, this is way too much at the, f like, my dude. Please, just let me do, tell me to do something. Show me, not tell me. This is an awful tutorial. Oh, well, I clicked on the thing, and I guess I can go back. We have dedicated, uh, Les Moreau as a region staging ground for the American forces. Any new American units will begin there. Regions, deployment zone. Remember that each nation has its own deployment region for bringing in new troops and supplies, as shown in the bonuses section of the reading section pane. Or not the re region section pane. The deployment regions are, uh, I'm, oh man, there's so many things that are pronounced in ways that uh, I'm going to get made fun of if I mess up. Uh, Kreisenach for Germany, Paris for France, Calais for Britain and Le Moreau for America. I probably butchered about all of those, including Pally. There. <laughs> Our logistic people keep the unit types together for easy reference, however, thoughtful distribution of force is necessary for victory. We're still going. Units are deployed on the map, infantry, tanks, aircraft, and siege artillery. I took weapons and tactics in uh, high school, actually, and uh, taught by John. John was awesome. He kicked a table into a student once, and then he got sent to uh, the Republic of Georgia, which then got invaded by Russia. So, <laughs> he lived quite a storied life. Uh, all present units are shown in the region. Left-clicking, edit units to move box. Please just select three infantry corps in the region pane for movement. Where are the little icons? I see the icons here. Oh, I guess it's the... It's, uh, we don't use the icons, so we click here. Units to move one. One, two, three. Send them here. Did they just like ice skate their way there? Why didn't they have an animation? Are you for real? They didn't even have a walking animation? Oh boy. <laughs> That's, uh, that's not really 2023 worthy, is it? <laughs> they have invisible trains. Well done. The infantry has filled the defensive gap as planned. We should take stock and see what else is needed. Units of the same st type stack on the map, even though they are of different nationalities. Whichever nationalities in the majority will appear on top of the stack. Do I care about their nationality? Is this... Select it. Okay. Despite the language barrier, our soldiers seem to get along. Your soldiers will be uh, tired from the transfer. So they'll be on defensive duty only for now. 
I like the idea that they're of a bunch of different nationalities and uh, they all get together because they can relax by playing uh, soccer or non-American football, except for the Americans who just don't get it, so they don't get that rest and relaxation bonus. That's my headcanon of how it works. They're like, this isn't football. Units can either move or attack once per turn. Your units can defend whether they moved or attack, but you can, if you initiate an attack, only those units that haven't moved can participate. You cannot attack from a single region more than once per turn. Okay. I had a little friend from high school, but learning a language in a classroom is a whole lot different than being surrounded by it. The common soldiers seemed to get on great, but the officers seemed frustrated. They would exchange information and coordinate attacks, but they wouldn't take orders from each other. Disunity of command. Oh, here we go. It's going to be about uh, it's going to be about football. Mixing units from different nationalities in the same region can reduce morale. There are three groups: Britain, Canada, Australia, and India form Group One. France is Group Two, and America is Group Three. If units uh, from more than one group in the same region, all units suffer a minor morale penalty. Belgium can stack groups one and two. Central powers do not suffer from disunity of command. Okay, I'm just going to take a moment here to say this is an interesting mechanic and this is like what you need to introduce as a mechanic to the game after you've had the player play about two missions. You know what I mean? You do the first mission, it's like these are the controls, these are the basic things. Oh, we lost some stuff during the fight. Here, take these guys to come and reinforce. There, that is a mechanic on how to do that. And then we fight again. And then it's like, oh, we didn't fight as well as last time. This is because our new guys were Americans and they don't understand how to kick a ball. And then they, you know what I mean? Like, they need to put a little bit of gameplay in between this info dump to make a more understandable narrative for this tutorial because it is so many words. We are, we've done 17 minutes of tutorials. 17 minutes. And I know that I'm not blitzing through it, but I... I'm trying to be thorough. <laughs> if you're ever unsure of your orders, remember to check your logbook. Is this my logbook? That's more of a quest log, but okay. Move uh, two French tank battalions. At least we get tanks. I haven't even gotten the opportunity to do that, can I? I can't do that now because I'm still locked in tutorial mode. Okay, we realize it will take time for your heavy armaments to get across the Atlantic. For now, I have taken the liberty of requisitioning some of our tanks for your use. I have heard that your men have taken a liking to them. Tanks of all types were stacked together, similarly to infantry. Remember, you can select the entire stack directly on the map, or you can select the region, and then left-click to add the individual bits. I feel like... So wait, if I just... Okay, it does send everything there. And then it doesn't even wait for the animation to finish before it finishes the quest. This feels very, uh, unpolished, this game does so far. I haven't, <laughs> haven't gotten to play any of it, so I can't tell you if the gameplay is good. But I can tell you that all of this menu stuff feels very, very, like, it's just missing that little bit of making it feel clean and good. Command has granted us gold reserves for completing your orders. This is a vital resource used by officers to requisition all manner of necessary items needed for the global theater. Gold reserves are gold. Yeah, you can buy stuff with them. Thank you. Oh my god. Why? <laughs> I don't need a tutorial on how money works. I live in reality. Thank you. Uh, French Command believes a victory at... Uh, Chetillon Marne <laughs> will put German forces to that location and relieve some of the pressure on Chateau Thierry. <laughs> There's so many angry French people, I can feel it. A good outcome here could also uh, give the people back some home some positive news. <laughs> Capture the French, or reinforce the French troops. Capture the place. Let's do it. We have all these guys. So, let's grab just all of this. 
Okay, I'm going to read this. Some of our best telecoms from spies in the area. Our operatives can scout out the information we need and relay it to command. Right now, we need more information about their military strike. No, I just want to attack. Listen, I can see that they have oh, infantry that are on top of a lot of poker sticks, or poker chips, so they have the high ground. Okay, this is a very simple battle. Espionage missions allow you to send spies to connect the enemy regions. Okay. Once again, this is like the thing you should do fourth, right? You do a battle, you do the thing, you reinforce, you talk about the thing, and then, oh, the next thing's going to be harder, so we have to uh, check out their stuff. <laughs> like, come on. I don't mind playing the game in the tutorial. Army Intel reveals enemy units. Both missions are integrated with your own regions and affect adjacent enemy regions. Click the Army Intel ability button. This one. I met one of these spies once, nerves of steel. You'd have to be tough to hide behind enemy lines, risking your life with every step you take. Espionage limitations. Your first espionage mission used each turn will always succeed, but each subsequent one has a risk increasing factor. A chance to fail. If you get a mission failure, your gold is still spent, but you get no additional information. Your ability to perform espionage is locked for the remainder of the turn. Oh, it just worked. Cool. So you just hit that button and they do the smarts. Got it. Our spies are reporting new intel is available. Region and army intel missions affect all enemy regions adjacent to where you activated the mission. If the enemy had a has counter intel active in one region, others may still be affected. You can see the results of these missions by selecting the enemy region. Okay. So they have infantry. They have infantry, and they have a tank battalion. That is fine. This knowledge doesn't do a whole lot for me because I have no idea how strong this is. Let's click this button, Army Intel. Okay, that's great. It doesn't do anything. Our spies are reporting a large buildup of German troops, more than we originally knew about. Active Army Intel will allow you to see exact unit counts and types, while Active Region Intel allows you to see enemy structures, economic information, the numbers below the icon show how many turns the ability remains active for in that region, so this is what the three is. It stays for three turns. Some abilities like Theft and Sabotage are activated directly on the enemy region and only apply to that region. This new information changes the plan somewhat. We will need to bolster our forces with the remaining American troops if we want to succeed. Remember that you can select the entire stack of infantry directly on the map, send it to a region. Okay. Select the room. Oh, these guys. Stand by for orders. We're going to send them over here. We're moving. Oh, yeah. Slide, baby. Oh, did you see that slide? They slid so fast. We'll need every advantage on the battlefield to push Germany back. Command has granted us gold reserves to requisition new tanks. I do like tanks. You can't uh, purchase more infantry corps. They are granted via campaign progression or events. However, you can use gold reserves to purchase tanks, aircraft, siege artillery from the purchase menu. Is that this? Nope, that's care packages. World War One loot boxes. Wh wh where's the purchase menu? Uh, over here, <laughs> got it. It'll take time for the ships to arrive from America with heavy ordnance. In the meantime, you can use French tanks to supplement your army. You already told me this. These machines are amazing. Our boys were already coming up with new ways to use them. That hopefully uh, <laughs> surprise the Germans. I think they also want to take them apart and see what makes them tick. My dude. Okay. Click purchase menu to close. Yep. Requisition has come through. New tanks have been delivered. New unit deployment. Units are deployed in one of three locations. You told me this already. I get it. <laughs> Why are we doing <laughs> multiple slides on the same tutorial thing? If people forgotten, that might actually be indi indicative of your game. They don't even turn. They're just <laughs> like drifting. Oh, that's so good. 
It would be beneficial to have air support for this battle. While recon is essential, keeping the bombers and balloon busters away from our front lines will allow us to concentrate on the trenches. We need to transfer them to the battlefield aircraft are gained by buying them. I get it. Uh, move aircraft from Paris via the monorail. Oh, that guy hit the ground. Chapter 3, Supply and Structures. There were seven chapters of this, weren't there? There's, like, actual gameplay in this game. I prom <laughs> I've seen it. I, I saw it before. <laughs> we, are, we are 25 minutes in. We started Chapter 3 of 7. So that, uh, that says that before we're done with the tutorial, it's going to be about two hours. <laughs> if it stays at this rate... I believe we have sufficiently equipped our frontline trenches. Now turn outlying support. Units, aircraft, select. Our unit moved with the rest as we neared the trench line. We could see the siege artillery setting up well aware from where we were fighting. These guns were designed to pound trenches. I would hate to be under them. Siege artillery are unique. They do not appear on the battlefield. Instead, they allow you siege bombardment. In battles, why don't you tell me that once a battle has started? They do not affect disunity of command. Any siege is still a siege and will be captured if lost. Just as we depended on spies gain information, so does the enemy. To that end, we should set up counterintelligence to prevent them from learning about our fights. Come on! This is so unimportant for the first battle. This is so unimportant for the first battle. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to take like a 30, 30 second break just to say uh, thank you to everybody. I want to say thank you to Green Mountain Science for the sub, Maggie Mags for three community subs, Aid Zeno Star for the sub, uh, Gildarto9 for the sub, Dan Dankin for the five community subs, and Silver Strife for the sub. Let's get back to it. Spies. Counterintelligence is an espionage ability you can apply to your own region. It lasts for five turns and prevents all enemy espionage in the region. Each time it prevents an attack, its duration is reduced. Click on counterintelligence. Okay. That was great. Success. Spies work quickly. By the end of the week, uh, no less than three German agents were captured and interrogated. Unlike other espionage missions, counterintelligence does not suffer from risk. It always works, but loses duration when it succeeds. Click the button to close the mission report. You've been using gold reserves to bolster our troops and add firepower to the lines. On the battlefield, however, supply is needed, not gold. A soldier without ammunition or bandages is a soldier who cannot fight. I don't know what a battlefield is, sir. I have not seen one of these. An artillery cannon with no shells is nothing but a rock to hide behind. Sir, you told me that these are not on the battlefield. They are outside of the battlefield. This is contradictory information. Supply is a currency used during battle. Supply is used to build trenches and other defenses. To call in reinforcements and activate abilities such as artillery fire and air missions. Okay. I'm, I'm choosing to believe that we're really close. <laughs> This is a fool's belief. He made sense. Our packs contain our essential rounds of information with some first aid supplies and hygiene necessities. But there is no way we could carry enough ammunition for an extended battle. Supply trucks could bring in what we need, but if we need a more permanent storage solution, we could fight without worry. Each unit on the strategic map has supplies. This is refreshed for each battle. Okay, once again, I'm going to talk about... I've been thinking about tutorial stuff a lot for uh, various reasons that are related to something I'm NDA'd under. But this is... Uh, a supply mechanic is a type of thing that, in my opinion, what you want to do is have someone go in, fight a battle, have the battle resolve, and then bring attention to, oh, you used this many supplies. Here is how you replenish those supplies so that people can be brought up to combat. You use the natural process of playing through the mission to showcase how a mechanic works instead of just talking at the person. Now, this is not a demo. This is a full game. It's uh, the World War I visual novel. <laughs> Made by Petroglyph. 
<sighs> each unit on the strategic map has, yeah, it's refreshed. Wait, it's refreshed for each battle? Wait, we don't have to manually refresh it. <laughs> Why? Okay, fine. Each unit on the strategic map grants a set amount of supply to the region. It is refreshed. Sure. Supply depots allow us to store what we need in combat in a safe location and keep it in reserve for the region. Without them, you can only use what supply your troops carry with them. Supply depots allow you to build supply. One of the most important structures you can build there is essential. Click the Supply Depot 2 button. Supply Depot 2. My favorite sequel. <laughs> I don't know why, but seeing that depot secured behind the ridge gate made me a feeling of security. Well, <laughs> we know that the Germans sure aren't attacking, so that should be your biggest feeling of security. We're a pacifist war here. We knew at least that we weren't going to lose this battle <laughs> because we ran out of bullets. There's one less thing to worry about. There are six structures available in the campaign, each with its own bonuses. All of them have multiple levels that increase in power as you upgrade. Oh my gosh, it's going to be a trilogy. That's amazing. Defensive. Oh, are they going to attack me? Those idiots. I was planning on attacking them. Come get me, bro. <laughs> the, Germans, the Germans got so bored of the tutorial. <laughs> They've come to murder me. As it should be. They're probably, their spies were going out, Sir, we've identified someone that's doing the tutorial. He's probably going to die really easily. <laughs> we've we've identified that 9 out of 10 players that have gotten this far in the tutorial have fallen asleep. <laughs> this makes our odds very good. I believe we are as prepared as can be. Oh, once our troops are rested and in position, we will begin the battle. We can defend if the enemy attacks, but for now, await further orders. You are dismissed. Turn-based. You can take as many actions as you like during your turn. Once you have done everything you want to do, click the End Turn button. The indicator will switch to the enemy, and he will be able to perform any of the same actions you can. Click End Turn. The Germans do not sleep or stand idle as the month passes. <laughs> They've been standing idle for a really long time, dude. They go about their business of war just as we do. Uh, yep, they take turns, move troops, purchase supplies, plan attacks, research attack. Your ability to see what they are doing depends on espionage for the most part. You'll be able to see they are doing something, but not always. Er, but not what? I, I hit next message and it didn't give me another message. Oh, we're getting a telegram. Our spies have caught enemy spies attempting to gain RV intel. Well, we did it. Cool. One thing I've learned is that any increase in spy activity usually means the enemy is probing for a good reason. Our officers do this too, and we're prepping for an attack. Just like a human player, the AI will probe with espionage and see where you are weak. And by that, it probably means that the AI just knows where you're weak, and then they spend money to pretend to spy there. I know how games work. You can use this as an indication of where attacks will happen. Oh, we're under attack, finally! Oh, we got so- look, we have 60 men! Oh, they have, they have many more men than we. Uh oh The AI can attack your territories on its turn, which will put you on the defensive. Each front, the line between the hexes, will use a different map. Oh, wait, what? Every single one of these lines is a different map? What? That has to be like procedurally generated or something, right? There's no way that someone went in and made a different map for every single one of these. If so, it would explain why they didn't have a budget for even a basic voice actor. <laughs> because if it was all custom made. <laughs> oh. Okay, we're not auto resolving. We're engaging in battle. Why? How do I start? Oh. That's really cool, though. I like those different maps. Knowing what forces you and the enemy have before battle is key to playing an effective count attack or defensive strategy. While you are always able to see each side, total morale, and what you're bringing into battle, you will only be able to see exactly what the enemy is bringing in if you have active espionage mission, blah, 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 battle fatigue, battle fatigue. Click button. 
go. I, I don't care. <laughs> I just want to learn how to fight. I get it. Our recon teams were sufficient. Between the ground scouts and aerial recon, we didn't do any aerial recon. We just bought an airplane nearby. We didn't send it on anything. We had at least some ideas of what the Germans could throw at us. Without dedicated spies, however, we could only get numbers, not details. They could have conscripts, or they could have stormtroopers. We would only know when the flame, or when, only know when the flames began to flow. Okay, these are modifiers. Deployment pane will show you a great deal of information about the upcoming battle, including the region, who is attacking, and special modifiers. Why, why do you need to know who is attacking? Isn't this a one versus one game? I guess, like, their force comp position, but I don't need to know that it's the central powers. <laughs> like, I got that. They're the only enemy. <laughs> one of the most important things is the available supply, which is broken down into core supply and your supply draw. Remember that without a supply depot in the region, your supply draw will be zero. And if you find battles to be too difficult, try adding or upgrading the supply depot. So we have 1,400 supply, we have uh, 600 from a depot, that's 2,000, we got no badges on our territory modifiers. Dismiss message. Let's continue reading our book. The army had an entire strategy and logistics team tell us the likely outcome of this battle before it happened, based on their current intel. One thing that the team could never quantify, though, was the human spirit. A good leader could defy the odds and win the game. Likely outcome. I can't imagine. I can't imagine. Do they... Are they going to ask me to auto-resolve the first battle? They're not even going to tell you what the thing is like, and they're like, dude. Do you want to auto-resolve the first battle? We're not, like... We're not even going to show you what it's like. What, the, what this part of the game is like we just we <laughs> want you to auto resolve it auto resolve likely outcome shows you the range of win levels your battle will fall into if you're auto resolve the battle the yellow box auto resolve simulates a battle based on force numbers and random events the more even a battle is the better it is to fight the battle directly so that your skill and good decisions never had any of those play more of a part in the battle than chance I'm not auto-resolving. Th this is it. We will meet them on the battlefield. They will not take this ground. Battlefield deployment. Engage battle. Let's go. I'm so excited. <laughs> okay. Final count. 37. No, 38 minutes of tutorial. And all we did. All we did in 38 minutes. Was build a tank. Do an espionage, move an infantry, move a tank, and move a plane. Right? That is all that I did in 38 minutes. I clicked like six buttons. Oh, I did a counter counter espionage as well. Ah. <sighs> okay, teach me how to war. Welcome to the front line. I am Adjutant Chief Garner, Lieutenant. Colonel Laurent has uh, spoken highly of you Americans and your ability to get things done. All your big battles, battles begin in the pre-battle phase, which allows you to set up your trench lines and initial troop placement before starting the actual battle. The map is divided into three sections. Each faction has their home territory, where they can build and deploy between them. Between them is no man's land, where nothing can be built. Well, this is kind of cool. like this. So we're going to set up trenches, as we should. There's like X's and stuff. Feel free to look around and get your bearings. The map is big too. Look at this. There's like, wow. Okay. They already got their trenches set up. Oh, look at their little dudes. There are so many of them. How you doing, little dudes? I hope you're having a good time. Feel free to look around and get your bearings. Battle will soon be upon us. So getting familiar with the territory will be beneficial to you. Camera controls on the battlefield are the same as they were for the theater map. In addition, you can click on the mini-map with the upper right corner to quickly jump. Yep. Wow. Yeah, we're going to have a big mini-map. We're going to have a maxi-map. Does anyone think 
Okay, this is a little bit off topic, but you know, you've been waiting long enough. You can wait another 30 seconds. Does anyone remember like how the map works in Diablo 2? I guess Diablo 3 has it as well, where it's like a semi-transparent version of the thing. I feel like RTS should have that option. Like maybe if you hit a button, then it just pops up in the middle as a semi-transparent so you can still see the game. And then you can just like get a real quick look at what's going on and then release the button so that it goes back down. Diablo 4 doesn't have that? That sucks. Well, I'm not buying that game. Uh, it's just, it seems so, it's so useful and I don't know why RTS doesn't have it. The camera controls on the battlefield are the same as they were for the theater map. In addition, you can click on the mini map in the upper right hand. Yeah, I read that already. Okay. There were already some trenches in place when we arrived. I don't know, an oxen decided to plow some trenches for us. You can tell some of them have been there longer than others by how well they were built. Some of the dirt walls barely held in place by planks, while others had wood walls and concrete reinforcements. On your first time fighting in a specific lo location, the battle will begin with a few pre-placed trenches. You are free to use them or replace them as you see fit. Any trenches you build will remain in place in all future battles in that location, unless they are destroyed or you lose control of the region. That's really cool. That's really, really cool. I like that a lot. Uh, it is a shame. It is a real, real shame that uh, they don't get, like, if you conquer the region, you don't get to steal their trenches. That would be really cool for the future. But I really like the idea of persistent uh, changes on battlefields. That is awesome. Hey, Stormzarn, uh, you missed me. <laughs> you missed me attempting to pronounce French things. Uh, looking around, the soldiers were digging even more trenches attached to the earlier ones we saw. Artillery cannons were being wheeled along in with carts full of ammunition. Everywhere preparations were being made, and tons of earth was being moved. Objects such as weapon emplacements, artillery batteries, and observation balloons do not persist between battles. They will need to be rebuilt each time. We have automatically added a few for this battle to save some time. <laughs> Why, thank you for the consideration. <laughs> Our area recon patrols and spies have been working to bring us information on the German lines. We can't completely rely on that information, however, as delivery delays can make their observations stale. Just like a player, enemy trenches also persist between battles and can be updated during the pre-battle phase. That means that your knowledge of the enemy lines from battle to battle can become outdated. That is cool. That is really cool. Using scouts or observation balloons to view the enemy lines can reduce casualties. Can it? I mean, scouting is for losers. You scout with your army, bro. Good trench layout serves two purposes, although not always at the same time. First, provides a staging ground for assaults on the enemy line. Second, provides a defensive position to protect key positions and personnel. Control points are primary focus, with the goal being to secure as many as possible. All right, so we're playing a micro company of heroes now with these little tiny control points. Talking with the French veterans, we learn that the most important lesson be in a trench as much as possible, whether our own or the enemy's. We could use their own trench against them to assault their key positions while being safe from their bullets. Control point radius. Control points have a radius. You can capture it inside of that radius. Only infantry can capture a control point, but the infantry can be in or out of a trench while... Okay, it's company heroes. Got it. We're standing in the command trench as a nerve center of the operation on this part of the front. As such, it is a key position that must be protected at all costs. Command trenches are special control points that only captured by entering the trench itself. Just by being near it will have no effect. <gasps> Look, it's got like little boards. I can't zoom in. <laughs> Command trench is a busy place. Messengers constantly run in and out. Orders were given and received. Maps were studied and decisions were made. Losing this place to the enemy would be a huge blow to the battlefield. Infantry assigned to the command trench are completely immune to damage from the outside. In addition, the command trench is immune to siege artillery blasts. However, infantry stationed inside cannot fire at targets outside. Keep it safe. Got it. Your first assignment will be to aid in shoring up our damage defenses. Our right flank... 
by position, uh, took some damage in the last battle. I need your men to repair and reinforce. Building and deploying uh, troops requires supply. The total supply you have in battle is determined by the number of units and supply depot level in the region on the world map. 25% of your total available supply is reserved for when the battle starts, so you always have some supply for artillery fire and reinforcements. I like the pre-deployment. Let's see how it goes. Our engineers have categorized things you need to know. What's available for you to use? We have multiple types of trenches that serve different purposes. We're familiar yourself with them. In general, trenches protect your infantry from harm and allow them to move around the battlefield in security. There are multiple levels of trenches you can build. Trench types. Do I have to read this guy's stuff? I guess I do. Firing trenches allow our infantry to fire on incoming enemies while remaining safe. Our engineers have ranked trenches based on their protection value and material cost. Firing Trench. Type. Firing Trench have three types. Basic, Improved, Advanced. All of them provide immunity to rifle fire and limited protection from artillery shells. The better the trench, the more protection it offers. We will this. I want to put this from here to here. That feels like... Oh, I figured it out. I did it. Multi-place. Well, in placement mode, you can place as many of the same object as you want. When you're done... Okay. Build that there. Well done, thank you. The game let me do something by myself. That's really exciting. I'm a big boy now. <laughs> okay, I'll build one of those right here. Uh, well done. Building lines of trenches allows for greater protection. Men moving around. You can upgrade previously placed trenches by placing a higher level version on top of the existing one. All right. Upgrading costs less supply than building. You cannot downgrade a trench, but you can remove it by pressing the X button. I don't want to do that. While protection is a primary goal, so is movement. Communication trenches allow men to swiftly travel between the four primary firing trench to get where they are needed. Community tre Com communication trenches are used to connect lines of firing trenches, providing a way to quickly gain or er, to quickly transition between them. Once again, I'm going to harp on this. If I were the one designing this tutorial, what I would do is I'd be like, here are some trenches and then have a German wave come to attack, and then have, like, the game kind of pause a bit and be like, oh, we need, I guess you. this is all pre-preparation stuff, but, like, you know, an attack wave comes or something, uh, you make it work within the mechanics of the game, and then, oh, we have to relay back to the command trench that we won. Let's make sure we have quick movement, or they're attacking over here. Let's use this uh, communications trench, something like that. So it's more ingrained with a gameplay experience for you as a player. It's easier to remember when there's actual stuff and you are being rewarded for your efforts. Okay. Communication trenches are used to connect lines of firing trenches, providing a way to quickly transition between them. Infantry and comms trenches gain a speed boost, allowing them to get where they need to go quickly. Infantry cannot stop in a comm trench. Less protection than firing trenches. Click. Wow, I did it. Best use is to connect two lines of firing trenches if you need. Comms trench, one end is connected to nothing. It most likely won't be of any use. Yeah, I got it. Oh, I'll put one here. Why not? Perfect. Beautiful. Blockhouse trenches, bunkers are heavily fortified trenches used to house reserve troops. They are impervious to just about anything, including siege artillery. You can hold up to. Oh, excuse me. Five infantry companies and make them immune to all incoming damage and invisible to enemies outside of the bunker. Oh, cloaking technology. Infantry stationed inside cannot fire out and can be uh, can only be removed via melee combat. Use them to stage attacks or take cover from bombardment. It's not letting me click it. <laughs> okay. You don't want me to build any of them. The other tutorials were like, hey, go build a couple of them. And then this one is just like, this is just what it does. I'm <laughs> not going to let you build any of them. Okay. Trenches are not the only thing our engineers can provide. Support structures allow specialized troops to provide defense, information, or long-range cover. While trenches persist... Uh, persist and form the backbone of good layout support structures are needed in every battle while more expensive they are vital for a good offense 
Gun emplacements. Gun. Huh. Okay, I haven't figured out how to gun yet. Oh, they have to be like... Oh, they gotta be on these. Okay. I figured out how to gun. I'll put this right here. They cannot shoot anything outside of the arc. That's fine. This is the perfect gunning position for Mr. Gunning himself. Yeah. Beautiful. Machine gun nests have an arc of fire. Blah, blah, blah. You can press the X button to remove it. I don't want to do that. Three additional MG nests. I, I cannot move the camera, so I guess they all have to be over here. There's a machine gun nest there already. I guess we'll put one right here. <sighs> the hex grid is very awkward for this. Very, very awkward. Because you can't have your machine guns facing forward. Which is insane. Alright. That seems great. Our engineers can reinforce your weapon emplacements if you need feel the need, though it would dig more heavily into the supply. Why do I have everything unlocked? <laughs> there is no progression in this game, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure you just start with the entire universe unlocked. Both machine guns and mortars have two different ver standard and reinforced. Reinforced are reinforced, so they're reinforced. Got it. Build a field mortar. Nope, not allowed to do that. <laughs> Higher supply cost. What we once strung up around our farms is now used as a weapon of war. A highly effective one. If you want the enemy to stay in the sights of your machine guns for a longer time, what better way than to tangle them up in the nest of wire? Yes. Barbed wire slows the enemy. As enemies pass... They damage the wire until eventually it will snap and be destroyed. Wire can be destroyed by artillery fire, bombs, and crushed by tanks. Your infantry are immune to all the effects of your own barbed wire. That doesn't make any sense. But your tanks will crush it if they pass through. I cannot place any barbed wire. Alright. It's apparently not that important. I used to see barbed wire all over the place back at home. It was always a neat line of fencing, though. Not these dangerous looking coils. The stuff was everywhere, forming a maze of death just past the lines. Yep. Razor wire is more deadly cousin to barbed wire. Razor wire acts exactly the same as barbed wire, but additionally damages enemies that pass through it. Observation balloon. Heck yeah. Blimp. Okay. I didn't read what it does, and I don't care. I mean, I, I have an idea what an observation balloon is. It helps me observe stuff. They told me about it earlier when it came to, like, scouting. Our command structure on the front line is word of mouth by messenger travel outside of the command trench. As such, we are only capable of tracking and coordinating a finite number of companies. The command cap is a limit to the number of units you can place onto the battlefield at once. In the campaign, this number is 30, although it can change in other game modes. Weapon emplacements, balloons, and aircraft do not, have a, do not reduce the command cap. Infantry, tanks, and artillery do. How do I deploy them? We track all of the companies currently deployed to better handle their orders. If a unit uses a command cap, it appears in the unit tray at the bottom center of the screen. Thank you. Oh, that's great. I'm very proud of you. Uh, yep. Each company is present via portrait. Clicking that company. When double clicking it, it will select and center the camera. Got it. Our artillery battles do not are not mobile companies. They require specialized men to fire them and are part of the command system. Artillery are special units that while immobile can do multiple abilities and fire across the battlefield. Artillery batteries are visible in the unit tray and take up command cap. They are very powerful and as such more expensive to field. Heavy artillery is the primary used to cause damage. All the various shells that they use are designed to destroy. Well, this is best used on defense. In some cases, a more offensive use is called for. Heavy artillery has three abilities. Precision barrage for default uh, damage. Poison gas for area denial. Air burst shells can deal damage to targets even in trenches. The first availability is available by default, while the latter two must be unlocked via the tech tree. Click the heavy artillery button. Artillery line placement. Oh, gosh. <sighs> we're an hour in. <laughs> We're an hour in. 
I didn't want today to be an April Fool's joke. I don't like this holiday because I think that it makes a bunch of bad content. And then we ended up with this as a stream. Oh, <laughs> why? <sighs> Well, not as large as the siege cannon I have seen, the heavy artillery has lived up to its name. I have heard about different shell types. While I did not see any of the poison gas shells, I was told they existed. I had heard the stories about Ypres and did not want to experience it myself. I've been there. Uh, like machine guns, artillery batteries have had an arc of fire. When placing them, you can see on the minimap where the cannons can reach. The area is large, so they can uh, usually be placed in the mid to rear lines. As with trenches, you can use the mouse wheel to rotate. Oh, look at that. They see me rolling, they hate it. All right, so this is just going to be a check the tutorial thing. Does it call me, like this babies you so hard, but then does it allow you to just place artillery facing in a really dumb direction? Does it spend an hour teaching you everything and then you just place artillery that is facing the wrong way and gonna blow up someone's house? Yeah, it does. <sighs> the French teams had their artillery placement down to a science with overlapping fields of fire and every part of the enemy lines within range of at least one artillery battery. I admired their ability to aim and calculate trajectories on the fly. It was all a bit of too much math for me. Artillery abilities have a cooldown. Using an ability on a battery locks down all abilities for that battery until the cooldown expires. Because of this, having multiple batteries is useful so that you always have at least one ready to fire. Place another one. Alright. <laughs> I mean, we've already experimented with that. I probably shouldn't. I'm not going to lose the tutorial. You can be right here. <laughs> now if we get flanked, we're safe. <laughs> now that our stational, stationary defenses are in place, it is time to fill our trench with men ready to defend our country. The troop deployment tab allows you to deploy troops. We don't want our men milling about outside the trenches when the fighting starts. All infantry will be stationed on the firing steps to make sure our defensive positions are covered. Infantry companies cost less supply to deploy in the pre-battle, but they are must be placed into trenches. And additionally, infantry placed during the pre-battle may be subject to siege artillery barrages before the battle starts. The cheaper cost and advantage must be weighed against the risk. I like cheap stuff. I don't really care if it dies. It's never. I've never. I'm never playing this game deathless. <laughs> Having talked with soldiers from multiple countries now, it seems to me that all of them had a knack for something that was a cultural thing. The French are very efficient with their supply since they are fighting in their own country. Our boys took the tanks, took to the tanks like ducks to the water, and the British were crack shots. For the Allies, oh excuse me, for the Allies faction, infantry companies have a nationality bonus which grants them a unique modifier. You can see this modifier by selecting a company and viewing the info pane or tooltip. These bonuses are something to consider when deploying and giving your troops orders. I absolutely will not. It is too much. I can't remember all of this. I suspect that the same could not be said for the Germans since they were, for the most part, all from the same country. And as everybody knows, as long as your country has the same name, everybody is exactly the same. <laughs> it's possible they had other advantages I just didn't know about since I don't speak German, and they didn't seem inclined to talk. German soldiers do not have nationality bonuses. Instead, German League can use conscript infantry and have other variations in their units. Like the American infantry. Oh, yeah. Right here. Your fellow Americans are, I am sure, ready to get to work. Darn tootin' they are. Uh, this literally took longer than the average American school year, which, as we know, is about 37 days long. In the pre-battle phase, infantry can only be placed into trenches. Yep, as with other objects, clicking the infantry button enters a placement mode, and you can place them. 
left click to place. Brilliant. That's a good start, but we still have holes in our <laughs> Of course we do. We put one guy down and I can't move my camera. This entire area over here has nothing. Place seven more infantry in ten... Oh, gosh. Well, this area is going to be very well defended and everything else is going to be garbage. Reinforcements reporting. Reinforcements oh, it's so American. Oh. We've arrived and await orders. Oh, yeah. Infantry companies are generally all-purpose. They can attack, defend, capture. However, it is sometimes necessary to bring in specialists for specific jobs. Infantry specialists. Specialists have similar... Company sizes, but make up for it, or smaller company sizes, but make up for it by having more health and morale than normal infantry. There are two types, raiders or grenadiers and flamethrowers or stormtroopers. Both are very good at clearing through trenches with, through their method of uh, raiders. Reporting for duty. There we go. We, we deployed some raiders. I'm going to go raid with them. I believe that our lines are sufficiently manned for now. We will hold back the rest of our men as reinforcements so that we can react once the battle starts. We'll also hold back our tanks. Let them be a surprise for the Germans. As with infantry, tanks cost less to pre-place. We will not be doing that, apparently. Unlike infantry, tanks can be placed anywhere in friendly territory. We will not be doing that. <laughs> Why are you telling me this? Our siege artillery battles have been moved from this battleground to cover another portion of the front. Yeah, we're covering back here. <laughs> we will have to do without this encounter. Yeah, you wouldn't want to overwhelm them with too many things. I appreciate that they're taking that out of the equation for now. <laughs> Pre-battle bombardment is available if you have siege artillery in the region. It is useful to clear enemy trenches to support your attacks. Because of the high cost and randomness of fire, it is best used when you are the attacker and planning a massive assault. I believe we are ready as well for V. Okay, final count, guys. One hour, two minutes, and 12 seconds of tutorial before we got to fight something in a war game. Wow. Yeah, Stormzorn is absolutely right. This would be as if the first StarCraft II mission, Liberation Day, was telling you how to build a fusion core. If you had to, like, tech up to Hive on the first mission inside the containment chamber in Heart of the Swarm. Amazing. This is still chapter four of seven. Kill me. Yeah. We're halfway done the tutorial. How you spend your supply in pre-battle is a key element of the game. Any supply you do not spend in pre-battle will be added to the reserve once the battle starts. You must balance to have more defenses versus the need for reinforcements. We have $1,006 left. Oh, yeah. Waiting was hell. Uh, they know. They know that their tutorial is too long. <laughs> but they don't fix it. They just write about it. With nothing to do, your mind can take you to some dark places. You're darn right, sir. You must be watching the stream. Well, our intel mostly got it right. Sometimes the only clue we had that this battle was about to start was the sudden silence of the artillery. Battle begin. All right, that's it for today, guys. I hope that you enjoyed today's stream. I will see you tomorrow. Let's go. If I should die, think only this of me. That there's some corner of a foreign field that is forever Eng Oh, he was he was English, never mind. A uh, soldier. Let's do it. We received warning that the Germans will likely attack soon. Get your men into position. During the transition of the tactical battle phase, all the objects you placed are built and the troops are deployed will man the trenches. Normally, the battle clock will begin counting down, but we have paused it for the tutorial and will automatically do so even when gameplay is resumed to give you time to read and react. Well, isn't that nice of you? You sure got a lot more guys than I do. Well, we got through three seconds of gameplay, which I think was all during the loading screen. You could tell how much experience a soldier had by how they handled weight. 
<laughs> I hate this guy. <laughs> Sometimes our intel was to the hour. Sometimes you only knew the battle started because the bomb er, bombardment stopped. Either way, we kept busy in the trenches waiting for the whistle to sound. Transition phase includes any days of siege bombardment that were purchased in pre-battle for both players. Bombardments have a chance to destroy pre-placed trenches and the men inside of them, as well as nearby placements. Okay, show it to me. Show me the bombardment. Blast me to smithereens. Make me feel bad for having placed all my Americans in a giant pile. Please, I beg of you, make me sad. Our strategists use information they have to try to determine how well the battle will go before it will even start. Man. Sorry, but did I have the option to auto-resolve this? Just like going back <laughs> to before. I had that option, right? <laughs> Imagine. Oh, it was grayed out, okay. Potential bar. The red central powers and blue allies bars at the top of the screen show the combat potential for both sides related to each other, representing available units and supply for both sides. A longer bar indicates more firepower than the opponent. All right, I am dead already. As units are defeated and supply is spent, the bars will deplete to show current values. While I am on the defense, and this is World War I, so uh, I should be fine, I guess. Many other factors come into play in winning battles. Skill at giving orders, technological advantage, and morale. Knowing when to stop fighting is sometimes as important as pushing forward. The top bar is the victory level meter. This represents a range of potential victory levels from great loss to great victory. The pointer will adjust based on scores earned by both sides to their relation to each other. Where the pointer rests is the victory level you would achieve if a ceasefire is agreed upon. We're not cease firing ever. The strategies were where men who poured or the strategists were men who poured over stacks of paper maps, radio transcripts, and pictures taken from planes. They somehow took all of that and told us if we were likely to win or lose. Somehow it felt like they forgot the most important part. The human will to survive. <laughs> Next to the top meters, you can find control point status. This is the status of who controls the control points. Click on the A icon to go to the control point A. Got it. Wow. Incredible. Holy crap. What a game mechanic. This had to be told to me exactly right now. There are multiple locations in our territory that have been designated as important tactical locations. These locations must be protected at all cost. The enemy has similar locations that should be captured where possible to reduce their capacity to fight. Every control point has a meter around the outside that shows the current owner and if it is being contested. As long as each side has infantry present in the capture radius, the meter will not move. And this means you must clear the enemy point. At first, we couldn't quite tell what was so important about these seemingly random places on the ground. Our allies told us that in most cases, they're secured points of reinforcement, this allowing us to bring new men and weapons into the area quickly. To capture control point, move infantry within the capture radius. You just told me this. The more companies you have in the area, the faster it will fill. The meter will halt if the enemy are there. Yes, you told me that. You must fill the meter entirely before leaving the area to capture the point and get the score. If you leave early, the meter will revert to its previous owner over time. Control point locations are used as a way to coordinate reinforcements to positions on the map. Losing these locations would be a blow to our ability to move troops where we need them regions. Each control point influences an area of the map and the reinforcement locations linked to it. A control point is lost or contested, cannot be reinforced from. This better be the best damn gameplay I have ever seen in my life. <sighs> a control point that is lost or contested cannot be reinforced from. You can see map selections linked to control points using the slash key. Wow. Look at that. Insane. Oh gosh, what a game mechanic. I'm actually... I'm, I'm having nerd chills tasteless. 
A reinforcements wait at key positions away from the battlefield. We have map specific routes into the area via control points. Losing the control points is also prevents us. <laughs> is this like an April Fool's joke from them? Did they replace the actual game tutorial with this just for April Fool's? Is this like an elaborate joke that I just didn't get? I, <laughs> I'm tired. I am legitimately tired. <laughs> I have talked so much. Oh. <sighs> We have map specific routes into the area via control points. Losing these control points also prevents us from losing the reinforcement routes. Each region is tied to a reinforcement point as shown on the mini map. If you capture an enemy control point that links to the side of reinforcement troops, you can then use those to reinforce your own troops. Top, bottom, left, right, A, B, start. Your men are needed on the field now. Prepare to deploy. <laughs> Wait, I have to, I have to re- I, <laughs> The battle hasn't even started and you told me this was more expensive to do it this way. <laughs> no. I just- Okay, we're gonna go lose some money. We got some guys. Reinforcements are on the way. Make sure that they are properly behind defenses when they arrive. I didn't have another choice. Reinforcement units, paused. Commands such as reinforcement, movement ability, and ability use can still be given while paused, but nothing will happen until play is resumed. No crap, that's what pause means. Sometimes it is wise to step back, pause, and take a look at the battlefield. This game is too fast-paced otherwise. However, right now, time is of the essence. Stop. Stop. Your lies mean nothing to me. You can control the game speed in order to allow yourself time to think and play. Click the play button to watch your troops arrive. Where, where's the play button? Here it is. Why do? Why is it VCR controls? Oh yeah, we're gonna go, gonna go get my parents' remote control for their TV. <laughs> oh, we can record this game on VHS. Our infantry will route from the closest mustering point and march to the location. Where are they? Show me their muster. Look, look, guys, we're mustering. Why don't they just take the trench? Why did these guys go back up here? What? Go through the trench. Why? What? <laughs> Why didn't they go through the trench? <laughs> I built the trench so they could walk through it from one point of the trench to the other point of the trench. That's like what they told me. <laughs> and then they just like, they Mario jump their way up there. They're like climbing like they're playing Assassin's Creed and they're going to jump off into a hay bale down here. Are you serious? <laughs> it would have been easier. It would have actually been easier for the game to animate them going through the trenches. And it would have made more sense. <sighs> Our infantry will route from the closest mustering point and march to the location you requested. Infantry companies Default to column formation when called in. This is a fast but vulnerable formation. It would be less vulnerable were they inside of a trench, though. Skirmish formation is defensive but slower to move. You can toggle between them using formation buttons. Spread out. Oh yeah, that was that was good gaming right there. Watch my troops enter the map before continuing. Okay. Information is one of the most vital aspects of war. We cannot shoot what we cannot see, and power has blinded him long ago. And we cannot plan for an invisible enemy attack. Oh, they're sending Dark Templar, boys! Units and structures have vision, but only so far. 
Fog of war, distance, hills, trenches, all obscure your vision of the battlefield, blocking your ability to attack and see enemy movements. Okay. I'm, I'm really trying to give this game a chance, but from a tutorial perspective, how many RTS have you ever played that explains to you how vision works? The answer is going to be a very, very low number. It simply is not a thing. And do you know why? I'm, I'm going to be a little bit loud here, but I need to express it. So if you want to turn your volume down a little bit, that is fine. The reason why is because we're freaking humans and we have eyes. We have been using this mechanic our entire life. We know how it works. Stop wasting my time with this garbage. I know that I can't see past the hill. Thank you, game. Information is one of the most vital aspects of war. I needed that. I really needed that. <sighs> Fog of war. We still cannot see any enemy movement. I, mil I made a balloon. But this is what we bought the balloons for. Yeah, okay. Raise them up. Okay, I can raise my balloons. <laughs> there goes the camera. Oh, okay, we can see now. As the balloon rise, they will reveal much more of the map and even allow you to see into enemy trenches if the trenches are filled and in range. Wait, why do the trenches have to be filled for us to be able to see in them? That doesn't make any sense. Watch your vision increase when the balloons rise before continuing. <laughs> oh, sorry, this is all caps. Watch your vision increase when the balloons rise. It appears our timing has paid off. The observers <laughs> in the balloon. Okay, so when, when this says real-time strategy, I didn't expect the battles to take the entire history of the war to resolve. Artillery. Remember that heavy artillery is good for damaging targets, since units cannot regain lost health or morale. Sometimes it is useful on defense to weaken enemy units before they attack. Units in tactical can be selected via the unit tray, or by clicking on the banner directly. Select heavy artillery. Uh, let's see. I know which one I want to select. Which one are you? <laughs> yeah, we got this guy. Heavy and light artillery have different uses and available shells. It would do you well to learn their uses. All units to play an info panel <laughs> that contains basic information about them when selected. Artillery battles have an additional ability to, that allows you to see firing rate brought just at the... I'm having a breakdown. <laughs> Precision barrage. We can barrage off the map. Well, how about that? <laughs> Why does the game let you click off of the map for your artillery barrage? Anyone who says they do not fear artillery fire is lying or insane. The sounds of shells cutting through the air. The sound design's not even that good. Don't pat yourself on the back, bro. Company Heroes 2 did it way better. The force of the blast pushing up at your flesh, the dirt and other things flying through the air. It is terrifying. The ability will place a brief warning decal on the ground before the shells land. Artillery fire is not exact, so shells will randomly land within the area. Artillery shells can cause friendly fire, so be cautious when firing near your own units. Once the barrage ends, the battery enters cooldown. This cooldown locks out all abilities and the battery until it expires. Watch your artillery fire before continuing. Oh, I did. It was great. They, they absolutely destroyed these uh, Hershey's Kisses of pay. <laughs> Many of our veteran soldiers can tell where the artillery shans will, sounds will land just by the sound. Oh, we're dying. Okay. Incoming enemy artillery will always show a brief warning image on the ground before the shells land. While units in blockhouses and command trenches are immune, and units in trenches take reduced damage, units in open ground can only dodge the incoming fire. Like this guy? 
Oh, he actually got in the trench. That's good for him. No, wait, no. They're just like splattered. Are they all dead? Uh, if only they had stayed in the trench. Infantry companies have a health bar green and a morale ball or white health bar. How many troops left? While the morale bar shows their willingness to fight, the morale bar could be affected by a variety of factors. Abilities, fatigues, casualties. And when it reaches zero, the company will break and run. Select a damage low artillery. Yeah, you. Okay, so you morons. What do we got to do? I want you to pay close attention to the morale of your men. I know they're bad. High morale will willingly go over the top and rush a machine gun nest, while those with low morale are likely to break and run at the first sound of rifle fire. Low morale units do not suffer damage re from damage reduction and will still follow orders, but their usefulness is limited, so they are so close to breaking. Sometimes it is better to withdraw low morale units and avoid the additional casualties instead of letting them break, especially on the defense. I... I haven't gotten to... I haven't gotten to do anything, and the game is already telling me to retreat. It's just specific units I understand. It's not like retreating the entire thing. But I have not done a single gosh darn thing. And I'm already losing forces and having to retreat. This doesn't feel good. Even if it is a explanation of the mechanics, it doesn't feel correct. Click the withdraw button. Oh, you can go into the trenches now, huh? Where where are you going? What, they just... Why wouldn't they go this way? They just fade off into nothingness while running the wrong way. Oh. I really wanted this game to be good, guys. I really did. I like World War One stuff. I think that it's super underutilized, and I think that if a if a franchise just like sat down, or a company that is like really good at their thing sat down and made a really cool World War One game, then it would be it would be so sweet. Like there's just so much cool design and stuff going on, and that's why I'm really let down here. I'm I'm gonna stick it through. I'm going to stick it through. Every game deserves that much respect, at least. <laughs> Give it a stream day to see. But I am so tired. I am actually mentally fatigued from this, just having to read everything, comprehend everything, and try to remember it all at the same time while speaking it. It's so much. It was always better to see a wounded friend pull back than lose them on the battlefield forever. Wounds heal. Morale can be refreshed with little rest. After a brief recovery period, they could fight again and learn from the experience. The drawing company removes it from play, but it does not count as a loss with respect to score. Withdrawal also saves on replenishment costs and frees up command cap for new reinforcements. Withdrawing is not instantaneous and units withdrawn in the middle of battle can still take damage and break before they withdraw. I mean, they only take like three seconds to phase out of reality, dude. Observe infantry withdraw before continue. Yeah, we did. We saw the amazing graphics. Keep your eye peeled for enemy activity. You'll be able to see enemy movement if you have units or balloons revealing the area. Infantry in trenches are hidden to units on the ground until you get very close. Oh, well, I can't read that anymore. It looks like they are moving troops towards location X, which means they are planning on assault on our right flank around location A. Normally, units in trenches can't be seen moving unless you have infantry near the trench lines. Didn't you just tell me that two seconds ago? Yep. Raised balloons can see into trenches from much farther away due to their elevation. Enemies and bunkers are invisible unless you enter them with your own infantry. I believe we will still need some specialized troops to handle the incoming attack at A. Trend station movement selection for safety and speed. Garrison infantry prefer moving through connected trenches over open ground if possible. No, they don't. They don't care about moving through connected trenches compared to open ground. That is a lie. I have played seven seconds of this and it is untrue. That's not true. I've gotten two minutes into this. 
Select a raider by clicking on the unit tray. Double click to select it and focus the camera. Are you a raider? These guys look very similar. New orders incoming. Raiders are an excellent choice. They're very good at clearing trenches, though they need backup to get there. Let's get them into position. Any trench other than communication trenches are valid destinations for your infantry. Stick to your own trenches for now, as clicking on an enemy trench will send your raiders into enemy territory. Nope. <laughs> yes, I understand that. <laughs> Click an open allied trench and move the raiders. Raiders roll. Take the trench. As long as they're a connected path from start to finish, your infantry will remain in the trenches unless something blocks the path. Infantry can pass allied infantry in a trench, but if they encounter an enemy, they will automatically engage in melee combat. Watch the troop move before continuing. The game is paused. All right, I guess I watched the troop move. Incoming rolling barrage. Rolling barrages are several enemy lines of artillery shells in order. These shells do not only damage and suppress everything in the path, but also drop smoke. This can be used to both damage the enemy and give your infantry cover if they follow behind the progressive shelling lines. Ready the, line. the Germans seem to have not done this. There, do you see? The Germans are going over the top. Prepare your defenses. It's like... They're like... A kilometer away, dude. They're not going to get there anytime soon. This was not like right behind the smoke. This was wait for the smoke to start dissipating and then send the guys over the top. Okay. The term over the top is the act of leaving the trenches to attack the enemy through no man's land. This action requires a lot of casualties unless the infantry is supported by artillery fire, aircraft, or other abilities to distract enemy fire. Our emplacements are positioned admirably. The Germans will pay a heavy cross. Blah, 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 blah. Weapons emplacements, machine guns, shoot enemy with gun. Closest in range. Manually choose targets, but gun. Right click target for dead. This is useful. Focus fire, specialists, whatever. Artillery is very useful, but shells are expensive and produce and transport. You must weigh the cost of firing versus the effectiveness of the shot. So don't miss. Got it. Depending on the size of the enemy attack, if you need to decide if your units can stop the attack before it arrives or if you need to support the defensive enemy in line. Is the intended game audience World War I veterans? <laughs> Dude, you can't have a tutorial this long for World War I veterans. Like, most of them would be gone before they finished it. That's actually, like... Not okay. Like, if Petroglyph would get sued. Oh. I'm having fun. We were given the order, and we climbed into the firing step and readied our rifles. Through the lingering dust and smoke from the artillery barrages, we could make out the Germans running toward us. Our machine guns opened fire, and we soon joined them. Firing step. Firing trenches have two positions, the firing step, left banner position, and reserve. Only the firing step position can fire on incoming enemies. You can use swap trench position to swap. Okay, so guys, guys on the wall can fire, but guys on not the wall can't fire, which doesn't really seem logical, but whatever. Hmm. For example, you want to deal special, yeah, whatever. Long line, open, fire, repel the attack. Direct your troops and use your artillery to stop the incoming. Oh, oh gameplay! Gameplay! What do I do? Precision barrage! Ba -ba 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 -ba. Oh, that was a lot of guys. Fire, my French friends! I feel like these explosions could be a bit more bombastic. All of the... All of the audio feels very... non-impressive. Do you know what I mean? Also, the enemies are like, all gonna die before they get to me, aren't they? Because I really, I do feel like 
in World War One, the roaring, you know, barrage of artillery making big explosion sounds, that sort of thing. The rattling of machine guns being super loud and like making this enormous chorus is part of how you make this sort of thing evocative, right? And that, I don't know, it felt kind of, it felt wimpy. It didn't feel like it had the uh, thing. And yeah, units are just like despawning. That's a shame. Artillery isn't just about show about damage. You can use artillery fire to suppress the enemy's ability to fire back at you. Useful if you're trying to approach the enemy line. The fall abilities for both light and heavy artillery will disable the ability of all infantry and placements of artillery to fire on their weapons. This includes both enemy and friendly units. Light artillery is far better at suppression than heavy, but both get the job done. The incoming assault is larger than I anticipated. I believe it is time to field some of our tanks. Thank goodness! Tanks are the primary offensive weapon. Tanks are also useful on defense as both a mobile turret to provide morale bonus to your troops. Heck yeah, they do. Allied tanks come in a cannon or machine gun version. How do I tank? Control point A. I'm going to read this. Machine gun version of tanks are best used against infantry. They're well armored and can take uh, light arms fire as well, but we wear of artillery mortars and tank cannons. Tanks. Reinforce two French tanks. Oh. Oh, this is a crosshair. I thought that this red indicator was a cancel thing. Uh, it's just a very, very small crosshair. My boys really love these contraptions. I admit they were great to hide behind on the way to the German trenches. It's very reassuring to have them around. Look at these guys. They're, they're going, <laughs> clipping right through the trench, just like they were supposed to. Tanks provide a morale bonus to infantry around them because they're neat. While providing a negative modifier to enemy infantry because they're scared. American infantry get increased benefit from tanks because we are simple people. <laughs> Watching your tanks enter the map before continuing. Yep. It's kind of lackluster watching them cross the trench. Like all units, you can right-click and move the tank, and hold down, right-click, drag location, white tanks. Cannot drive over improved or advanced firing trenches to place... Yeah. Let's go. Whoa. Okay. I guess because they can't go over those. Yep. They're sure going. They're a little bit stuck, and they're, they're clipping through each other. Oh, there goes my barbed wire. I have to defeat the enemy attack of two people. Okay, Mr. Tank. Show me what you got. Oh, they're artillery -ing -ing -ing. Wow, what a dodge. My gamer or what? Oh, I'm over here now. Oh, games. Oh, the fight is still going and they have locked my camera. There we go. Balloons are reporting incoming fighter planes. Balloons are vulnerable to fighters, but we don't know what their mission is. Enemy is dispatched fighters. Fighters and bombers have two missions each can perform. Enemy fighters can threaten your balloons. It is up to you to decide if you want to lower them or not. No. Remember that balloons are all lowered and raised at once. What? Why would they all be low? Of all the things that they simplify in this game, instead of like making a whole nother tutorial section for, why is micromanaging your balloons? <laughs> the one thing they're like, no man, if your balloon over here is threatened, we need your balloon across the entire continent to be lowered as well. Uh, where's the lower button? I don't even remember. Balloon? Yeah, okay. Call in air support. Unlike tanks, each nation seemed to have their own ideas about planes. I've seen a crop duster back home doing stunts for fun. These boys have nothing but pilots here. 
Available air support shows how many aircraft are currently available to be sent on missions completed. Two total you have in the region, the invisible air wings active remaining duration refuel meter currently refueling available again. Well, it's close enough. We saw biplanes overhead and shot one of the German fires. Once we looked up and saw one of our bombers hit a German machine gun nest. Oh, look at this epic battle. Oh, yeah, get him. What is that guy shooting at? Oh, yeah. That's a triplane. Oh, my goodness. Wait, did our guy lose? Where's my other guy? We just got smoked. They owned me. Is this guy dead? <laughs> they just destroyed me! <laughs> More planes out. It's because they got three wings and I only have two. <laughs> so I can't control these, right? Yeah, I just have to hope they do their best. <laughs> Epic. It's a good thing this guy just left. Well, send the balloons back up. <sighs> the reinforcements are slowing down and their soldiers are showing signs of low morale. I believe their momentum. Did I like hold off an attack wave during? Oh yeah, I did. Didn't even notice. Because this game's sound design is not very evocative and it's hard to pay attention to what's happening. If uh, if it sounded more like battle, then it definitely would be more attraction inducing, right? Like I would have been able to, if I was over here watching this and you could hear the blasts and the smashes and the and all that kind of stuff. Then I'd be like, oh, there's a bath. I didn't hear anything. Each attacker has the option to cease fire at the end battle time score. Defender can only surrender, which gives up control points. The command trench to the enemy battles can also time out when the timer reaches zero. If you have lost day the daylight and the battle ends with the rules, cease fire. Germans request a cease fire. With the current victory results, but aren't I? This is negative for me. We have achieved what we came here to do: prevent the loss of more ground. I suggest the Germans call, or accepting the German call for ceasefire. Enough blood has been shed here today. We wouldn't want to just. We wouldn't want to open up the tutorial for a bit and just allow you a little bit of free play to finish the Germans off or something, or to you know like try to take a control point or just any of those things. We wouldn't want to allow you to put all the things that you just learned into action as a player. So take the ceasefire. By the way, to encourage you to do this, we have grayed out the deny button. It is not viable. You cannot press it. I'm not going to say if this game is good or bad because I have not actually gotten to play much of it. I can say this is one of the worst tutorials I have played in a long time long time it is absolutely if this game is good this is not a good indicator of its quality this is it's miserable yeah okay accepting the ceasefire will end the battle tally the final score with no additional change to control point ownership while the enemy will always accept a player ceasefire the player can choose to the enemy will always accept a player ceasefire? I don't know a whole lot about this game, but that seems A, really dumb, and B, very abusable. Germans have stopped their assault, and our troops are standing down. We have held our ground.
Stop trying to be epic, game. We don't- this music doesn't fit my feelings. Yo. <laughs> Can't even see the interface. Because <laughs> it's covered by this tutorial. <laughs> I don't know what this says. <laughs> I feel like I lost. Like, this bar is really big. My bar is really small. I, it says I got $137.6. I don't know. I don't... I don't have a great understanding of this game. But it genuinely feels like the they pulled me into a losing battle and made me lose. Oh, wait. Are these central... I'm... That's a loser bar? <laughs> yeah, you're right. This is their losses. I didn't... <laughs> the colored bar is their losses. <laughs> and then it flips it so that on... On our side, it tells the enemy losses. And then on their side... <laughs> so bad. Why don't they just say killed or something? Or, ah, uh, the, sh the visual design there's not great. Because, like, from a basic UI design, if you have a giant, just enormous red bar, and it's the enemies, it should mean that the enemy is doing well. Almost always, right? And if you have a big old blue bar, like the biggest blue bar you've ever seen, then that should be indicative of, oh, you blew him out of the water, man. You did great. Like, it's in the name. But it's the opposite here. After the battle, your aides will compile a report to address where you stand versus the enemy. It is divided into two sections, general level of victory and detailed statistics. The debrief screen gives you an overview of how well you did in the battle. It is broken into two screens. The first will show you in your overall screen and win level, while the second details casualties, replenishment costs, and supply use. Let's see the detail. Cool. Remember when I moved those raiders over somewhere else and then I never came up again and I didn't really use them? That was fun. Infantry companies can use their grenades while moving. <laughs> Thank you for this did you know. I didn't even know. I haven't gotten to the grenade tutorial yet, game. We, we're gonna... That's gonna be subsection 38C. <laughs> you gotta consult the manual for grenade use. Okay, we're back here. Battles are expensive endeavors, both in monetary and human costs. While the defense was successful, we should never forget the lives that were lost to bring our victory. After the battle, you were presented with results. In most cases, the cost of the battle with gold reserves, supply, and national will. If the attacker achieves a great victory, the defending region will lose a star. Not my star. Oh my goodness, we got plus six national will and they got minus nine. Get wrecked, losers. We had ample warning this time, and the German attacks seemed more like a scouting probe than a full-scale assault. But even minor battles cost lives. The men are tired, and they'll need not time to recuperate. Me too. Me too. A high casualty rate can penalize the national will. All regions that are engaged in combat will also suffer a battle fatigue, which lowers infantry morale in the region until your next turn. Please let me attack. Please. If the next thing this tutorial does 
is not let me counterattack on a weakened enemy who lost the fight. I am, I'm actually, I, I don't even have a threat. I'm just going to cry on stream. I'm going to make them watch it as developers. German forces are moving. Hopefully they have not grown wise to our plan and will move as expected. Enemy movement like the player. AI will move troops around its turn without espionage. You will only be able to see a number of units moving, but not what is moving. Espionage reveal the true contents of the army. Like the player, each unit can move and attack at the same turn. That was laggy. <laughs> oh, we're defending somewhere else. Oh, no, new turn begins. Gold reserve, research point. A new month begins, the war continues. Command uses this time to send out new orders, refresh expenditures, and rebuild lost infrastructure. On the start of a new turn, you will receive an advanced gold reserves, new research point. These amounts can change over time, and with research in addition, all of your unit's movement and attack limits are refreshed. Click continue onto the new turn UI. Chapter 5 of 7. Chapter 5 of 7. These men will require time to repair any damage in regions they control. Depending on the damage, labor can be extensive, so it may take more time. One. Oh, I'm having a breakdown here. I'm just so tired. At the start of each turn, damaged territories were not involved in any sort of defensive action. Defensive action will receive a, recover a star. Means once you take a star from enemy territory, you will need to attack that region at least once each turn to prevent the star's power from regenerating. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. This might be the time. It seems our men have recovered from their fatigue. Nope. But the enemy is still exhausted. We can use this to our advantage. Fatigue regeneration, battle fatigue regeneration. This means you can attack a fatigued enemy with unfatigued guys and then they'll get dead. Got it? Announce. We will announce our discoveries to the press. We get research and national will or gold. I feel like we want uh, gold because we have 161 national will. Getting like 8% of that is not that useful. Decision to keep our discoveries classified as blah, blah, blah. Upper hand against our enemies. It removes overspent. Yeah. Research and development. Final part of war. If we can find new combat strategy, develop a new weapon, we can gain an edge in battle and win this war. I feel like if this game started with a much smaller tech tree and then we use that to like discover better artillery and stuff, it would make sense. We have like so many things unlocked already. Command has asked us to weigh in on their direction. Research team should take. Research used to unlock units. Click on the research. Got it. Click. Okay. There's a lot of stuff. Holy crap. That's a lot of stuff. Oh, goodness. Trench, engineering. How do you make a tank go boom? Adds whippet companies. I don't know what whippets are. Tank refinement. The Mark IV. Sturmpanzerwagen. I can't get that. I guess I have to follow the thing. Oh, it takes two research. Oh, are they going to make me get something specifically? Like, you don't need to explain how this works. It's so obvious. The engineering and scientists have broken down the research into a display of potential avenues. We can, we can pursue anything, but we can't possibly research everything, so it's vital that we concentrate on research that will fit our planned strategies for victory. Use the mouse to zoom in. Wow. Why is zooming in and zooming out what they want me to do? You can see how many research you spend in the upper right hand corner, the large number of hexagons around the center, how many points you have to spend in each research branch. Each branch has a total of 40 points worth of research, but it will not be possible to research every node within the campaign.
Yeah, this is a camera tutorial. A camera tutorial two hours into the tutorial on maybe the least useful screen for a camera tutorial. It's just, this is all nonsense. It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> like, why are they doing it? Where? <sighs> Each node is a research point in the upper right-hand corner icon. Incidentally, only six nodes around the center will be available, but you can research any of these from the beginning of the campaign. As you purchase one node, any linked node will be unlocked. Yes. There are so many games that have systems like this, and they don't even bother to explain it because it's so obvious. It's been a mainstay in gaming for like 25, 30 years. Any link note, and this is not, <laughs> I guess I should, I should rephrase. This is not a game that they should be expecting first time gamers are playing. <laughs> It's not like a seven-year-old is going to be given his new Nintendo Switch and a copy of The Great War Western Front by his parents and be like, Okay, little Jimmy, it's time for you to learn how video games work. To learn it in other places. I'm so tired. I know I've said I'm tired a lot, but like, this is, this is actually just awful. It's so bad. As you purchase one node, the link node becomes unlocked. I get it. For our upcoming battle, we need a way to punch a hole in the enemy lines. I believe undermining would be the best choice for our research focus. Oh, they're forcing me to go one way. Spend three points on death from below in the trench branch. Where is it? So wait a moment, wait. I have all of these unlocked already? Why do I have so much unlocked? Wait, so it's supposed to be that these are all what you have from the start and then I have this intricate web of stuff. But for some reason the tutorial just like has me starting with 30 different things unlocked. More than 30, right? Like, this is a lot. Why would the tutorial give you so much tech? <laughs> what happened to keeping it simple? Oh, no. That's not good. Okay, if you click reset, it'll refund. Doesn't work. <laughs> Why would you tell me that? Also, it's not a reset button. It's a revert button. It's not even the right button. <laughs> Clicking apply. Lock in. Remember, once you click apply, your research choices are locked. They're already locked, buddy, because you didn't give me the right button. <laughs> Seems our enemy has not been idle while we bolster our forces. Spies are reporting a recent enemy activity in the target area. Enemy act AI will not sit idle while you move your units around on the map. Select the place. Wow, look at that. They have zero hearts. Nobody loves them. Our agents have reported new infantry corps as well as aircraft wings around the area. This will make our original attack more difficult, however. <laughs> we have some extra troops positioned at Cezanne. When trying to capture enemy regions, try to attack the region from multiple fronts on the same turn. This can result on multiple star reduction and adds multiple levels of battle fatigue to the target region. Remember that each of your regions will also suffer a level of battle fatigue that the enemy can exploit. Okay. Let's go to Cezanne. No. <laughs> This 
game is really pushing the auto resolve part of it, huh? Let's, uh. I'm gonna talk about. This is a controversial opinion. Uh, but I personally feel that if an aspect of your game has an auto resolve, you shouldn't put that aspect in your game. Like, you as a developer need to be confident enough to make the players play your game. And if you are not confident enough, then you need to improve the aspect of that game to make it worth playing. When you add an auto-resolve feature to something, it means that you fundamentally admit that you have made a gameplay loop that is not enjoyable. And instead of fixing that, instead of addressing the issues, making it more dynamic and enjoyable over a long time, you are robbing people of an experience with a random button. I don't like this mechanic. I don't like it in any game. I don't like it in Empire at War, even though I've used it because the land battles in that game are bad and they should be good instead of being auto-resolvable. But that's a game from 2006. This is a game from like three days ago. So there's a little bit of a difference there. I thought the experience would numb me to the fear before an attack, but it never did. There's no way to get used to climbing out of a trench and running to the hill of a gun, avoiding death by barbed wire. The attack screen allows you to see what units will take part in the battle. Active espionage will increase the available information. You can choose between fighting out the battle directly or auto-resolve. If the results are in question, if the results are in question or you aren't going for a great victory, direct battle is the better choice. If I'm not going for a great victory, then direct battle is better. Wait, did I just get subtly dissed there? If, okay, if you're going for a great victory, then you probably should auto-resolve, you absolute scrub. <laughs> because you can't earn a great victory if you manually take control. There's not even like an animation or something. Well done. The goal is to not always be com uh, the goal is not always to completely take control of a region. Sometimes it's better to complete similar goals with an eye towards the bigger picture. Another thing here that is very interesting about the auto resolve mechanic is one of the things that actually sold me on picking up this game is the very interesting idea that the battlefields remain the way they were after a fight. Right, so when you build up those trenches, then those trenches remain for the next battle. When the, or, you know, when the ground is shelled, that ground remains shelled for the next battle. That sort of stuff. It is, you build layers upon layers upon layers. So instead of fighting the same fight over and over and over, it expands and it feels like those maps get a level of progression with you. And auto-resolving is the complete antithesis to that idea. And... At least to me, that was one of the core defining things that stuck out to me when I was reading about this game. So, why auto-resolve? Now do I have to, like, take up the trenches that were built by an AI? Does it not change at all? I don't want either of those. And that is very sad. Well done. The goal is to not always completely take control of a region. I mean, it is, let's be honest. Sometimes it is better to complete smaller goals with an eye towards the bigger picture. The results of your battle are displayed after each combat session. You did not gain a great victory, <laughs> but if you had, you would see the change to the region star lovely. Okay, once again on the show, not tell aspect of things, give me a great victory here so that you can show that the star level has been decreased. Don't have nothing change and then tell me that, you know, if something else had happened, then it would have changed. Just change it. It's okay if powerful things happen in, you in your tutorial because it's scripted and you can set up the rest of the game to be okay with that. You can also view any national will changes Click the button. 
to close the recap UI. It felt like we had been fighting for days, but when the smoke had cleared, I had only realized it had been a few hours. This man, he does speak the truth quite a bit. Everyone was exhausted. I think many of us had begun to understand just how much of a toll this war had, had taken on the people who had been fighting for it for years before we arrived. After a battle, both regions display battle fatigue as smoke and flames. Battle fatigue is cleared at the start of your next turn, which means that your current attacker will have to weather the attacks on his fa er, fatigued regions during the defender's turn. Selects is on. How you doing, bud? Both sides seem to have this down to a science. They would cycle out attacks on enemy line from different directions, which would be a sound plan if both sides weren't doing it to each other. Sometimes one side would get lucky, but more often it, than not, it would lead to everyone being exhausted and neither side gaining an inch. Each time a region takes part in battle, it gains a level of battle fatigue which reduces the max morale for all infantry in the region. By attacking the same region from multiple directions, you can stack multiple levels of fatigue, making it easier to gain victory. You have told me this like three or four times. I am pretty sure throughout this tutorial already. Remember, however, that the enemy can use this tactic against you since all of your regions that are attacked also gain fatigue. The larger the force in the region, the more supply that is required to field the full strength. Yeah, you told me that before. Larger forces can drain our global supply bank at a very fast rate, especially when we pursue multiple battles. Supply must be manufactured back at home, and this takes gold reserves. Fielding units, building trenches, supplies, using artillery and other abilities can rapidly drain supply. You can use the purchase menu to buy it with gold. Let's buy... 200 supply for 500 gold. Oh, what a bad exchange rate. Okay, I click the button. The French worked quickly to make ammunition, uniform, food, and other supplies we need to keep fighting. Tanks and aircraft were shipped across the channel for the British Army. Our own hometown shipped out goods for us to use, though it took some time to arrive. In a way, our civilian countrymen were fighting with us. Well... Balancing your gold reserves and supply is vital skill to learn. Overbuying supply can leave you bankrupt and unable to initiate attacks, while buying too little supply can prevent you from fielding your attacks and abilities in battle. Click the purchase button to close the menu. Cool. We have built up our forces. We have reduced the pressure where we could. We have replenished out of supply. We are ready. Select. Let's go to war. Okay. I don't care. Let's do this. I'm not even reading anymore. Oh, Pope Urban II. Which is weird because this looks like a pretty rural area. We have a lot of stuff. They have a lot of stuff. I can't judge these numbers. I, I do find it funny that, like, our special forces commandos, there's, like, six of them, and there's just a hundred of John. Do we have any tanks? Yeah, we got some tanks. Cool. I'm gonna rush them with tanks. Welcome to the trenches. Our boys are putting the finishing touches on the defensives now, so you're time to get your bearings. Remember that all the tactical battles begin with a pre-battle, which allows you to set up your trench lines, company placements, and defenses. You can use this time to view the layout of the map, including the control points are located. Trenches had a small, fresh earth gunpowder, sweat hidden under it all, a hint of blood. We knew what to expect this time, but the stress from waiting never got easier. If you fight multiple battles on the same front, the map and trench layout will persist. Yes, you've told me this already. From one battle to the next, as well as the battle scars you or the enemy create. When fighting as an attacker, your trench lines don't need to be sophisticated but make sure to build at least some defense so the enemy cannot turn the tables on you. Please just leave my camera alone. Orders have come in from command. While they want the entire region secured, they recommend that we capture control point 
why first? Because it's right in the middle of the map. Well, great victory is needed to reduce a region's stars. Sometimes achieving a small victory is better in the long run. Stop telling me this. I don't like it. It disagrees with my morals as a warrior. Even a minor victory will whittle down the enemy national will, which is a step towards winning the campaign. Our engineers recently came up with a plan for undermining. We plan to put that to use in this battle. Some battles support... Uh, uh, some pre-battle support elements are placed or targeted in pre-battle but are triggered once the battle starts. Siege bombardment and undermining are primary examples of this. I don't... Okay, this is another one of those things. They taught me... I think that the easy way to do this pre-teaching would have been in the first battle we didn't have that pre-siege bombardment, right? Like they made a point about that. What if that is what we researched? And then we got to counter, or we got to fire our batteries in the exact same way. Instead of having this new ability, it feels like that would have been the really reasonable way to make it like, <laughs> instead of just like, here's this new thing, new thing 763. And then, you know, when you research later, you can be like, oh, this is another version of that. I don't know. I could be wrong. Our sappers will tunnel under no man's land and under the enemy trenches themselves. We have to keep the enemy distracted. If the battlefield is too quiet, they can hear our men digging under them. Undermining creates a gigantic explosion that will destroy virtually everything in the area. I do like destroying virtually everything in the area. If this is cool, it'll all be worth it. Because I will take back everything I said if it's just an awesome explosion and it's worth seeing. Then it was absolutely correct to do. Okay. Undermine purchase pre-target in battle. You can target anywhere on the enemy side of the map except I can't move my camera right now, game. You cannot target the explosion near the control points or command trenches. You can set one undermine per battle. They can only accumulate three undermining craters per map. We're going to do it right there because that'll hopefully break off their trenches and then I can cut them apart. Engineers have completed the tunnel and packed it with explosives. We will leave it to your discretion as to when to detonate. So uh, was all that stuff about the enemy being able to hear me making this just fluff that didn't act wasn't actually true? Because I was like thinking about that and now it sounds like they were just saying words. The undermining explosive remain dormant until the battle begins. At that time, you can detonate them whenever you want using the battle or the button in the siege artillery lab. Ah, the plus sign. <laughs> Pre-battle bombardment fires siege artillery rounds at the entire enemy line from off the map. Bombardments are purchased in days. You are limited to two days for every siege artillery battery you have in the region. Click the plus to add one day. Okay, so we want uh, one male siege artillery bombardment. Is that what these icons are telling me? And then we'll deploy our troop. Oh, we're going over here. Oh, we're going down here. <laughs> Our goal is to take territory. Our men must reach the territory safely. Remember that plan for our attack. Building balloons. Yeah, I'll build a balloon. It's going right up here. Perfect. It's beautiful. Yep. Scout the enemy. It's uh, it's the same. <laughs> it's it, Remember when the balloon was built to give me vision before? And now the balloon is being built to give me vision. I'm glad we're doing this tutorial twice. You have learned much from our past battles. Excuse me. I have fought one battle. I have fought one battle and one auto resolve. Leave it up to you to decide what we'll need for this assault. How far can I build these trenches? I've been thinking about that. Like, can I just... I don't know. Where does this go? Oh, I can't build it any farther out than this. Darn. So, but I could just trench my way over to the enemy. 
Uh, yeah, you're a blockhouse trench. Uh, I don't know. This is a lot of trenches. I was kind of hoping that they would make me build a trench network. You know what I mean? Like, to some extent, as a... Here's what you learn, but I mean, there's only a little bit that I feel needs to be done. Just make sure that people can move between these decently easy. Uh, this area... I don't know what's going on over here. I guess reinforcements come in from this side, so I might as well have a little trenchy there so they can get into the trench a bit safer. And I literally don't think this has any value, but I'll do it. I don't know, just make sure that all of my little networks work. You gotta have good connectivity. And there, and there. Perfect. I mean, this looks like a good trench network to me. And then we're going to deploy people. Flamethrowers! Play some troops. Support structures. Oh. Yeah. Maybe... You right here. And right there. Right there, and right there. And we're going to get some flamethrower squads. And raiders. Because everything I know about World War I is that French people are super overpowered here. So I'm just going to go, I'm going to go full French. Like absolutely unbeatable. I guess I probably need to build some defenders. So we'll just put some guys in here. Some dudes in here. And some guys right there. How many more supplies? Oh gosh, I still have a lot of supplies remaining. Reinforcements reporting. Reinforcements ready. I guess we'll get these American losers. Yeah, seems good. Alright, we're at 30 of 30 supply. Let's do this. So do we get to actually do the battle now? Like, is it just going to let me fight? I would love that. The French command was testing us this time. Letting us make our own decisions. We did the best we could, planning for all eventuality. I mean, I didn't plan that hard. But in the end, it came down once again to wait. I forgot to build machine guns. I didn't do the best I could. Uh, bu -bu -bu -bu. Yeah, machine gun. Machine gun. Machine gun. Machine gun. There we go. That seems better. Whatever happens, happens. We're going to start the... Oh, okay. Yeah, guys, this is this is a French-only chat from now on. <laughs> if you're an American like me, the only French you know is from that one episode of Dexter's Lab. A competent leader can get efficient service from poor troops. <laughs> Well, on the contrary, an incapable leader can demoralize rich troops. Oh, well, we've paused already. Siege Bombardment must have had some effect. Let's raise the balloons! Ba -da -ba 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 loon. Germans have dug in really well around that control point. I can see blockhouse trenches, barbed wire, and while we can be sure they are well manned, this will not be an easy task. Trenches offer a distinct advantage, especially when supported by weapon emplacements, barbed wire, and artillery. It is generally advisable to uh, approach a position with twice the number of companies as the enemy has in that position. I thought the real life number was like three times as many to take a position. In addition, supporting an approach with artillery and slash or tanks will greatly increase your chance of success. That's what the tanks are for. Approaching that position without a plan would be suicide. We'll need to soften them up before we can try to take the ground. Softening a target. Wow, the bombardment tab. I never would have used this information that I got previously to know that. Thank you for telling me, game. I definitely have not been sitting here for a long time being like, when do I start my bombardment? $200. 
targeted siege artillery strikes are available as long as you have siege artillery in the region. They work similar to artillery barrages in that you click a button and then click the location. Unlike normal artillery strikes, the shot delay is much longer and easily avoided. So they should only be used for stationary targets, such as encampments or trenches. Our engineers report that the undermining explosives that we planted are ready to go. Why don't you try them out? Okay. That was alright. I don't hate it. That explosion was both amazing and terrifying at the same time. Yeah. Sound design's really lacking in this game. We had reports that it could be seen from miles away. There's no way anywhere near that anyone near that blast could have survived. Undermine parentheses reaction. Undermine explosives will destroy anything in the area, including trenches, companies, emplacements, and vehicles. The explosion will destroy friend and fro. Friend and fro. <laughs> so make sure your units are clear of the explosion. Why didn't they tell me that before I pressed the button? That was indeed impressive, and it's made a dent in their defenses, but the area is still well secured. While powerful, undermining is expensive. It can't destroy everything. And you can't be sure of what the enemy has in the area during pre-battle. Click the air support tab. Bombing run. Bomb. Well done. Remember to use your artillery to suppress enemy fire. Move through the trenches when possible. Especially in enemy territory. Where's my little plane guy? Oh, oh gosh. Oh, why are they sending the right flyer there? <laughs> you can get something a little bit better, dude. <laughs> Where's the bomb? Epic. I'm gonna go kill everybody. By the way, I'm pulling everything. <laughs> we'll do this. We got some tanks. Let's see, you're gonna be like control group. I want my siege artillery control group. All right, tanks, you're way too fast. The infantry are too slow. We're gonna fire you and then precision barrage and precision barrage and maybe a little, oh. I'm out of precision brush. Oh, we got this guy. All right, get in the get in the trenches, boys. I don't really care if you all die. This is World War One. That's how it goes. Why can I send in airplanes? Yeah, air superiority mission. Take down their stupid balloons. Look at this balloon. It looks dumb. What is this? Why did it explode? I don't know, I wasted money on airplanes. <laughs> Alright, I have no idea how much I lost. Yeah, we can we can take down Will. Are they using flamethrowers against my tanks? They have no mixed arms or anything here, it's just pure flamethrower. What is it, me? Why is the flamethrowers working on the tank? What? It's made of tank. All right. The tanks heat up. I guess that's true. Wait, no. Shoot these guys, please. I guess get in the trench and melee them because you can't flamethrower and melee. Everyone knows that. Oh, uh, do I got to send this guy home? Yeah. Could you like teleport into the abyss? Where's this point? Okay, everybody take the point. I'm like inside of the radius. It told me to just have guys inside the radius, right? Control point capture can only begin when one faction is in the capture radius, whether on the ground or in trenches. Sense unit in the blockhouse trenches camp. Oh, there's these guys. I see. Yeah, the immortals. 
But if we send everybody in there, we should be able to have a party. I feel like all you need to do is get one guy with a flamethrower here, one guy with a flamethrower here, and you're done. Right? Maybe I don't know how World War I worked, but it seems like that's a good strat to me. I'm gonna take the tanks over here and just blow stuff up while we wait. I guess everybody's partying inside of there now. And they have very low morale. But they have very good cover. Wait, the tanks shot like the little thing. What? The tanks shot the truck that was holding this balloon. And as a result, the balloon exploded and fell. Why wouldn't it just float up and away? That would actually be really cool and kind of funny, wouldn't it? Like you lose control of it and it's just like kind of drifting off to the side until it disappears off the map. That would be neat. Man. Oh, well. My tanks are tanking people. I feel like tanks are very good. What are they doing? Why are they charging? <laughs> Wait, were they all giving up? Because they were all... Did they despawn, but not everything despawned here, and now there's just a bunch of... German soldiers? Alright. I'm gonna go destroy this. So I caught this. Okay, I can reinforce from a closer position, whatever. I have 29. Can I just kill them? No, everything is going really well for me. I don't want to stop. This is the first time I was enjoying this game to some extent. And there's just... The enemy is offering to surrender. We should order our troops to hold their ground. Enough blood has been spilled today, and the battlefield is ours. We're doing too well. We can't let that happen. During the battle, the defender can offer a surrender. and They feel that the battle is lost. Accepting the surrender will give the attacker ownership of control points, resulting in a great victory and region star loss. While the enemy will always accept a player's surrender, the player can choose to decline. You've told me that already. We've had this exact screen here before. Thank you, tutorial. In the end, we chose to accept the enemy surrender after taking a solid position over pushing forward into more death. I admired the command for this decision that they didn't have the option to make. <laughs> a few more feet of ground was not worth the hundreds or thousands of lives it would have taken. <laughs> the hundreds or thousands of balloons that would have died. While you can refuse enemy surrender, unless you feel you can increase your points by maximizing or minimizing your lost men and resources, there's little reason to do so. Click continue button. Sweep. Look at that. It's dusting time, boys. Let's get the brooms. Our victory here will result in pushing the Germans back and moving the front line. Well done! Achieving a great victory as an attacker reduces a region's defensive stars by one. If it is the last star, the region changes ownership. Let's go to the world map button. Look, we got three hearts. We got two... This. Incredible. We killed 73 billion enemies. And we only lost 543 basic infantry. I don't think we lost that many basic infantry. I think that this game just makes up numbers. Did you know? For allies, infantry companies from different nations have a unique bonus trait. Now you know. Region secure, our men have managed to push the German line back by a significant amount despite the cost. This battle has diminished the stars for the region to zero, 
As with other battles, the star change, national will change, and replenishment costs are all displayed. We were ordered to Chateau Su Barn. Nope. <laughs> to help secure the region. I managed to find Charlie. He was going home. Who's Charlie? <laughs> oh, even though some of his legs wasn't. Sorry, Charlie. Oh, he's pulling the Lieutenant Dan before it was cool. He'd gotten tangled in some barbed wire and he got hit by an artillery shell. He tries to put on a brave face, saying it, it could have been a lot worse, but I see the pain in his eyes. Have or done neat. <laughs> that is the first time anyone has ever said that about this place in World War I. <laughs> Welcome to the greatest hellscape maybe in the history of humanity. Oh, neat. <laughs> I appreciate that chat. That's amazing. <laughs> when you take control of a new region, part of your forces from the attacking region are automatically moved into the new one to keep it defended. And the star level is returned to one. All enemy forces retreat to a nearby friendly region except for siege artillery. Any siege artillery in a captured region are destroyed and must be replaced from the purchase menu. Don't know why we don't get to keep them to some extent. That would be cool. <sighs> Germans left in such a hurry that some of their buildings were still intact. Okay, I'll take that. They had an intact supply depot and a field hospital that had just been abandoned in a hurry. If there are existing structures in a captured region, these structures are taken over by the new owner. Though you can research the ability to destroy them before the enemy can take them over as well. Oh, okay, destroy your own. <laughs> I thought that this sentence was like, well, you could take over their hospital, but if you want to spend research points, you can blow up the hospital instead. All newly captured regions regain one star immediately. I think you told me that twice already. And they will regain stars over time as long as they didn't take part in battle. You've told me that as well. The new captured region will still gain battle fatigue till the owner's next turn. This is such a repetitive tutorial, in addition to being two and a half hours long now, and I still haven't gotten to part seven. Wait, is this part five? Is this part five or six? Please tell me this is part six. This is part seven? Okay, good. We're going to finish the tutorial in under three hours. Well done. You men were green when you arrived on these shores, and through your perseverance and bravery, you've managed to push the enemy back with only a small amount of training. We will need every ounce of that bravery to push the Germans out of France and back to their own borders. If you still have questions about a topic or need a refresher, you can view the encyclopedia by clicking on the button in the upper right, or upper left corner. I love encyclopedias. I haven't done enough reading today. I just haven't done that much reading, and I would love to hit the encyclopedia so I can read. Wow. Look at that. Holy crap. That's so good. Oh. Well, I guess I'm not reading that. Oh, well, God, there's another chapter. <laughs> We're going to run out of Roman numerals eventually. <laughs> Didn't it only say there were seven chapters? <laughs> this is the biggest plot twist in the history of gaming. I have nothing more to teach you than why is there a part eight of the tutorial? <laughs> Just go away. Your actions on the battlefield have proven that the Americans are ready and able to fight in this war and defend Paris. Well done. Now that you've completed the tutorial, you are ready to try out the different game modes and experience the challenges. Click the check button to view video. What video? <laughs> okay, let's go watch a video. In the end, I still don't know exactly the reasons why the Great War started, or what it was intended to accomplish, but I do know what the results were. Four empires that crumbled into history, and a bunch of changed borders. Spoilers. Those changes 
Couldn't wipe away the hard feelings that simmered after the war ended. I decided to continue my military career and eventually earn the rank of captain. Perhaps not the smartest move, as those hard feelings boiled over into another world war only a little over 20 years later. <sighs> You've completed the tutorial. <laughs> You have the knowledge you need to play the campaign, play the full campaign, or experience a historical battle. However, if you like, you can continue the tutorial for a few more turns. Now that, that is an attractive offer, isn't it? That is, that, oh, I mean, I, I would just love to keep playing the tutorial for a few more turns. It's only been 2 hours, 30 minutes, and 35 seconds. I couldn't even talk about age of mythology in that amount of time. Not even close. Let's choose to return to the main menu.